Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is a, uh, a basic tutorial on some tips on how to use the Starblast 4.5 EQ. Uh, I'm going to assume you already have it set up. You've got it looking like this out of the box using the instruction manuals for setup. Uh, there's two things you need to do before you start using the telescope, uh, and that's balance the scope itself with the counterweights, and then align the finder scope. So first off, uh, in order to move the telescope by hand, you've got to unlock the axes. There's a knob here, which adjusts this direction. This is east to west. And then north and south along this axis, the declination. So declination and right ascension. This is the way you move the scope in the sky to find different objects. You first want to move the scope off to the side. Let's do it like this. And you just kind of let go for a second and you see if it's a little out of balance. Uh, I'm going to pretend it's out of balance by shifting the counterweight up. So now it's obviously scope heavy. The, the counterweight is not acting enough to, to balance it out. Simply slide the counterweight back, try it again, until the scope stays put on its own. That's balanced this direction. For the other direction, north and south, declination, you can move the telescope back and forth in the rings themselves. Just loosen the little lock knobs here, slide the scope forward and backwards until it's balanced. Uh, the next step is the finder scope. If the finder is not aligned, you will never be able to find anything in the sky. It's very difficult to look through the, the eyepiece, which is a relatively narrow field of view compared to naked eye, and find anything. So the first time you use this, you have to do it the hard way. You've got to find something without the finder scope, because if you just screw this thing on, um, it's not aligned to the view of the main telescope. It's slightly off. So I like to do it during the day. Just uh, look out in the distance, find a tree, or a power pole that's at least a quarter mile away, something as far away as you can, and loosen the axes, find it with the main scope through your uh, 17 millimeter, your low power eyepiece, lock the two axes down. If you need to fine tune the position to center the corner of the building or the tree or whatever in the main scope, do it with the slow motion knobs. Okay? So now you've got the uh, corner of the tree set right in the middle of the eyepiece. Now look through your finder scope here, and you'll see the dot, but it probably is not on the exact same thing. We'll just simply use the two screws on the side and the back of the finder to make sure the dot is overlapping with what you see in the center of this field. Once that's done, once that's done then you know your finder is aligned and you can use it to find things in the sky. Before you do your initial polar aligning, you need to make sure that the mount itself is pretty level. Just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be dead on accurate, but get the tripod legs roughly even. If you're on a hill, then obviously you have to raise or lower one leg so that the top of the mount is level. What that's going to do is when it comes time to do the polar aligning and you need to look at that latitude scale, the latitude scale will be accurate for your location as long as the mount is level. The equatorial mount needs to be polar aligned to the night sky in order for it to move in the proper directions using those slow motion knobs. Um, there's an altitude, that's this axis right here, this has to point towards Polaris, and the height of that corresponds to your latitude. So here in San Jose, I know we're at 37 degrees north latitude, so I'm going to look on the side of this, there's a little scale that goes from 0 to 90 on the very bottom, opposite side of this. I'm going to loosen that axis, and then with this knob right here, I'm going to raise or lower it until I get 37 degrees right over the arrow. Once I've done that, I lock it down. Then the left and right direction, I've got to be pointing right at Polaris. So I'm just going to pretend Polaris is right there. I know the height is right because I've done 37 degrees. And you can loosen the mount on the side and pivot it this way until Polaris is right in line with the north-south axis here. Uh, so what that means is if I was to draw an imaginary line up this axis right here, it would point right at Polaris. That's the way you need to leave the mount. Lock it back down. So now when I loosen the knobs that I showed you earlier and I move the telescope around, lock that back down. When I move this around, notice I'm looking to the south, I'm looking to the north here, but all the while this axis still stays pointing at Polaris. That always has to be there. Otherwise, the scope won't track. What that means is, let's say Jupiter's right over here. So I'm going to move the scope to Jupiter, lock it down, maybe fine-tune the positioning of Jupiter using the uh, finder scope and the slow motion knobs. So now I've got Jupiter in the view here. The Earth's moving, the Earth's rotating, so you'll quickly notice that Jupiter will start to float out of the field of view. As long as you're polar aligned, and this is pointed towards Polaris, all I have to do is twist the one knob that spins the telescope in this east 
west direction, and it will follow Jupiter as it moves through the sky. If I'm not correctly aligned, let's say I'm, this axis is pointed to the west, then I'm going to have to move both knobs in random directions in order to keep things centered. So polar lining just makes it a lot easier to track things with the equatorial mount as you're following along at high power. Now the scope comes with two eyepieces, a 17 millimeter here and then also a 6 millimeter. Now it's, it's sort of the opposite of what you think. The higher the number on the eyepiece, the lower the power. So you always want to start with your lowest power because that gives you the widest field of view in the sky and that makes it easy to find things. So always use your 17 millimeter first. That gives you 26 power and a nice, decently wide field of view. When it comes time to zoom in, you can then pop in the 6 millimeter eyepiece, which gives you 75 power, and you're cropping in and making things bigger. So let's say you wanted to look at Jupiter. You've got your finder scope aligned, you're uh, tracking well because the equatorial mount is aligned. Pop your 17 millimeter in, unlock the axes here and here. Uh, let's say Jupiter is right over there. So I'm going to eyeball it, get the tube roughly in the right orientation, then I'll look through the finder scope and fine tune it by getting the dot right on Jupiter. Then I'll lock it down. And then I look through my 17 millimeter eyepiece, and as long as my finder scope is decently aligned, it should be somewhere in the field of view. It may not be centered, but that's what the slow motion knobs are for. So I'll adjust that until I get Jupiter centered. That's pretty low power. 26 power is not quite enough to see detail on the surface of Jupiter. You'll easily be able to see the moons around Jupiter at that power. But now it's time to zoom in and see an even closer look. So I take the 17 out, as long as it's roughly centered, put the 6 in, and then just refocus with a knob here until you get a nice sharp image. And now you've got a closer up view at 75 magnification uh, to look at uh, the cloud bands on Jupiter. If you're wondering what the next step is to enhance the view, I can suggest a couple of uh, accessories that will give you a, a nicer view of the night sky. Uh, the first thing that I think everybody should get is a Bartle lens. It doubles the power of whatever eyepiece you use with it. So let's say you started with that 17 millimeter, you're looking at Jupiter, it wasn't enough power, so you pop in the 6 millimeter and you get a nice big view of it. Well, you can go even further. The scope is capable of doing at least double that magnification. So with the Barlow, you pull out your eyepiece, you put the eyepiece into the Barlow, and then the whole assembly goes back into the telescope. Lock it down, refocus, and now you've just doubled the power. So 75 has become 150 power. So uh, even more details on the rings of Saturn, cloud belts on Jupiter. Uh, if you're looking at the moon, that will really zoom you into the, the individual craters. Uh, speaking of the moon, if you're looking at the moon and you find it's a little bright, because the moon is obviously the, the, the brightest thing in the night sky, and a, a four and a half inch reflector can suck on a lot of light, it's not going to damage your eyes, but it's like going outside on a sunny day without sunglasses. It's not very comfortable. So we have a moon filter, a very simple accessory. It just threads into the bottom of any of your eyepieces and cuts down the brightness. So now you have a more pleasing view of the moon surface and the contrast seems to go up because your eyes aren't washed out with so much light. All right, well, there you have it. There are some basic tips on how to use the Starblast 4.5 equatorial mount. Uh, please read the manual in full. Uh, I gave you the kind of general overview, but the manual will really explain each individual part and piece and how it works uh, very well. So definitely familiarize yourself with that. Uh, and then just with a little practice and experience out under the night sky, you will really enjoy your scope and see all sorts of uh, wonderful things in the night sky. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.